Hello, you guys. Welcome to the weekly bump. I woke up this morning all in my feelings. Got so much water and fire going on in the sky right now with a little bit of Capricorn. But seriously, man, Chiron going direct now. Um, I think that we're, we're coming to a point of like real healing and we're all sort of inviting the next chapter, right? We're, in, we're inviting it. We're ready for it. So let's see what comes out. Okay. Five of Cups and Seven of Wands. You know, the Mar oh God, the Mars and Pisces stuff. You know, we just went through the Mars-Neptune conjunction. And whenever I see the Seven of Wands, I'm always like someone is feeling like they got to defend themselves and that there's things that we feel like we have to defend ourselves against. Um, or on a totally kind of separate note, there's something that we feel that's worth fighting for. Hopefully it's the latter. Hopefully we have this cause, right? We have this reason, we have this thing that we feel it's time to go chase. And in spite of whatever is going on in the feelings <laughs> with the five of cups, whatever is going on, there's this desire to really get over that. There's this desire to not have that thing be a thing anymore. And whatever pain, whatever sadness, whatever hardship that you've encountered, it's like there's this warrior inside that is trying to do whatever it needs to do to not have that hold us back anymore. I mean, this is a beautiful combination when you really think about it. Um, the sorrow and the sadness of the Five of Cups, but completely becoming overwhelmed. It's almost as though the Five of Cups is the adversary itself, but that's all within your control being an internal energy, right? Cups being emotional. And the only thing maybe you're really fighting is, is yourself in a way. And that's the best battle to have because it's a battle you have control over through this, through your will, you know? If you're not engaged in create creative projects right now and you're feeling a bit low, get creative. I don't even care, journal, paint, do yoga, dance, sing, play the guitar, whatever you got to do, because that is going to help act as a conduit through the, of the, for the life force to really come through you. And that's going to be really beneficial to help you get over whatever it is, whatever it is. Okay. Oh, well, these wanted to come off the bottom of the deck. See, the devil is moving away. We are even running away from the devil. I think it's been so obvious to us or it's becoming so obvious to us what it is that needs to like be left back there. And I think there's even a, a, an idea that we don't have to get so scarred. You know, we don't have to let our psyche be so affected by events that happen to us. And there's this wherewithal, Seven of Wands, to, to really not be scarred, you know? And the devil reverse is beautiful because it's an opening. It represents an opening of the heart, the heart energy. And the Seven of Swords reverse is also beautiful because it represents that no longer are you going to keep going with that cyclical self-sabotaging behavior and you really are determined because if this, this is nothing else, if not determination, this is a card of valor. So if nothing, you are determined to not go through that again, to not have that thing again, to not deal with that stuff again. And you're not going to let your mind do that to you again. I mean, there's such a, a powerful drive coming up from very deep within to be like, I'm choosing a different path, period. I'm choosing a different path. I'm going to do it a different way this time. And there's no stopping me. And that's, that's what's so great. We're getting um, cups, wands, and swords. You know, there's no pentacles coming out here. There's nothing like going on in the physical realm, which pentacles and earth energy really represents the physical world that surrounds us. So wands is kind of like associated with our solar plexus, cups with our hearts, um, swords with our minds. So it's all going on in here. And you're probably, Mars and Pisces, oh my God, seriously. Um, so you're probably feeling 
maybe a little bit annoyed because you know it's in your control and you know that you're the only one that can really change this path, but at the same time empowered. You can feel both things. <laughs> you can feel conflict, you know, it's okay. Let's see what else comes out here. Some of you may be making really big changes, you know. Ah, yes, Wheel of Fortune, yeah. You're making really big changes. And what happens when you make those changes? Like how many times can I quote Fight Club? You know, I say evolve and let the chips fall where they may. Like how many times can I quote that movie? <laughs> I say evolve. This is an evolution. And it's, 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 um, it's closing a door. And when you close that door for good, look what happens. In a way, Queen of Swords coming in and mentally commanding the Ace of Cups to come to her, right? She has this beckoning quality with her hand out like that, beckoning to the Ace of, of Cups, like, come to me. And Ace of Cups can represent happiness and fulfillment and joy. It can represent a new romantic thing if that's what you're looking for. Although I don't really know that there's any, any, um, any people out there right now, at least watching my channel, that are really like, okay, I want a new love because I know that that's going to make me happy. No, like you want to feel that fulfillment on your own so that when a new love comes, you can have a complete and whole connection, right? No one is trying to manifest a new romance uh, from a broken place or from a sad place, you know, from this, because when you manifest from this, you just get some more of this and this is nonsense and it's not necessary. It's not relevant to your life anymore. You've moved past it already. And the wheel of fortune comes through and is like, okay, all right, let the energy evolve. You evolved, the energy needs to evolve. It's important for you to remember that the Wheel of Fortune is not an immediate energy. It's so critical to remember that because sometimes when it comes out, even in a weekly meeting, a uh, weekly reading, I guess we're a meeting, <laughs> when it comes out even in, in a weekly, a short-term reading, or even a monthly, all it's saying is that this stuff is in the works. Um... The Ace of Cups suggests that it's maybe a little bit closer, right? That thing that you're wanting, that thing that you're wanting to feel, that true state of serenity and peace within your heart, that that is very close. You're very close to feeling that, maybe closer than you think. If you're still kind of here, it's closer than you think. This may seem tumultuous. This may seem challenging. This is right around the corner and it's important for you to have faith and it's important for you to keep fighting, you know, keep fighting for that which you believe in. Okay. Wheel of Fortune works mysteriously. It's very much based on your resonance. As you resonate, the Wheel of Fortune gives you what you're asking for. So you have to be careful about what you're asking for. And I've been saying this with Mars and Pisces. I'm going to keep saying it until it leaves. You know, like manifestation power is so strong and we don't really realize. And we have to pay attention to our thoughts at all times because the minute that we find ourselves caught in a negative cycle is the minute that we like kind of either put the wheel on hold you know, or we, you know, suspend the benefits of the Wheel of Fortune, or we kind of push it away, um, or we kind of give this mixed signal so it doesn't really know what to do, so then really nothing happens, and then we get frustrated again. You know, we have to maintain a consistent stream of positivity, a consistent stream of gratitude, right? Because gratitude is the abundance frequency that everyone always talks about. So it's important to remember that, to feel abundant in your moment now in spite of whatever the heck is going on, whether you just, you know, broke up with someone, you just left your job, or you just made some major life change and you're worried about what tomorrow is going to bring. None of that. It's There's no place for that anymore. Um, because there's nothing to really be afraid of because life looks out for you. You know, that's what the wheel of fortune is. It's life looking out for you. Okay. So let's see what else comes out here. So much fire and water. 
Oh, we have Mercury entering back into Sagittarius, which is great. Judgment card coming out, right? And the Chariot card. Okay, well, we can stop it with that. We can just leave it there because these are two of the most exciting cards in the deck. Uh, you know, what did I just say? Life has you all taken care of, and that's what the Chariot represents. Chariot represents your soul, represents your higher self. It represents that higher place, that divine place. It represents the divinity in you. And there is no divine entity that would ever sit there and complain about how much they don't have because they know that what they have is the abundance of the entire universe, okay? And it takes a while to really train your brain to think about it like that, to train like, okay, this is one thing I love about Taurus, right? You guys know that Taurus is little, sorry, my hair is all frizzy today. I did not wash it. Um, my, you know, Taurus, their motto is I have. And I think about the Taurus motto all the, uh, mo motto all the time just for my own self, because Taurus is kind of a, an interesting placement in my chart, but my North Node is in there. So it's kind of like my future. It's kind of like where I'm headed. So I do think about Taurus a lot. Um, and one of the, re one of the things like, I have a couple Taurus friends and it's so funny how just by nature, just by who they are, how quickly they can manifest something when they really want it, because there is this just built in wiring of, it's already mine. It's already mine. It's like they can look at their whole life as a whole, like one big kind of long snake of time, and they can see themselves from beginning and end and say, okay, well, here I am in this kind of snake of time. Here's my future. And here is the place where I have the thing that I want today, but I already know that it's mine. It's already here in my life because you can see it as this moment, one big long moment. <laughs> and um, it is time for us to start acting like the things that we want are the things that we already have. To act as though it already exists. If you're wanting to start a new project at work, you know, and you might not have the funds to pay for it all up front, you know, go for it, right? The Wheel of Fortune also means money. It also means money. This is a Sagittarius card. And one thing I love about the Sagittarius connection with money and finances is that they're just not afraid to spend. I'm not saying go and spend all your money and be irresponsible, but they're also like, they know there's more where that came from. Jupiter and Sagittarius, right? There's more where that came from. So there is more. And there's more waiting and you're going to see judgment, right? Judgment is an illumination. It's an awakening. It's like, oh, now I see it so differently now. And what you're going to see differently is all this stuff, you know, but I think you're at that place where you're like, I already know. I already know. I got to get it out of my life. I got to get it out of my heart. I got to get it out of my mind. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're fighting the good fight here. <laughs> You really are. You're fighting the good fight. And I'm so excited for you because the blessings that are coming down for you are just unreal. And you're going to start seeing it happen really, really fast. The minute you start changing your mind about stuff and the minute you start di directing your effort towards something more productive, the minute the, the benefits are going to just be compiling on into your life. Ace of Cups. So really, really exciting stuff really great. I know the Mars coming in contact with Chiron can be tricky. So right now they're like technically conjunct. They're like 10, there's like a very weak conjunction, 10 degrees apart in Pisces. And when Mars comes in contact with, with Chiron, we can have a tendency to kind of get a little glum um, because it does surface the stuff, you know, it does surface the pain. There's an attention there. It's okay, right? It happens. And the goal is to act in spite of those things. I even just talked about that in my podcast that I did yesterday on my other channel. Um, to act in spite of those things, to act in spite of the fear. You can still feel it. It's okay. A feeling of fear is nothing, right? It's just an illusion anyway. So it's more about recognizing that you feel it and also recognizing that you don't have to let that determine your actions really, right? 
you know, we have all the planets going direct with the exception of Uranus right now. So we are in, in so many ways, we're feeling this forward motion that we haven't felt, you know, with all the retrogrades, we haven't felt it for a while. And it's kind of reminiscent to the beginning of last year, you know, when we had, um, again, all the planets going direct and the wheel of fortune kept coming out. The wheel of fortune from the beginning of 2018 is the same stuff. So all the stuff that you've been working on, all the, the creative projects, all the stuff going on at your work and within your family, this is the continuation of the story. There probably were a whole bunch of interruptions the past several months. And now it's like, okay, let's pick it back up because now you're going to really start seeing something. You're going to really start seeing the stuff come online for you. And what's so great about the 2020 Saturn Pluto conjunction, right? Is the traditional ways of the things that we've done it, you know, the ways that we've always traditionally done it before are just getting just blown like right out the window. And Pluto is just going to come and make sure that our structure as we know it kind of gets obliterated. But sometimes it is that structure and it is that kind of internal dialogue of tradition that keeps us going at kind of a slower pace. And Pluto is going to be like, you got to hurry up, man. Like you, you got to get through this stuff. You know, there's, there's no time for this. There's no place for this anymore. You got to make these changes now. And so this whole year, we're going to be feeling this buildup of this. And we're going to know intrinsically that there's going to be this change coming. And it's something to be so excited about. You know, we're seeing a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, politically and all of this uh, always, you know. And, and I think that the more and more we can pay attention to the big global scale and what's going on in, in politics and, and what's going on with governments and what's going on in the big picture, we can even kind of find that mirror within ourselves too and being like, oh, wow, these people aren't you know, all these protests going on. Um, but you're also kind of protesting your own structure. You're protesting your own uh, methodologies as well. And I know I am. I'm not trying to project my stuff onto you, but I know that a lot of people that have been following my other channel have been going through the same thing too because I get DMs all the time from people t telling me about how many changes they're making in their life. So I know it's not just me. Um, and people who are conscious, people who are aware, people who are open to the flow are the people that are going to really receive the maximum benefit of this. So it's, a, it's an exciting year in 2019. You know, I'm not going to be doing a 2019 astrology thing or anything like that, but um, go and watch those people that you love, those astrologers that you love, pay attention to what they say and, uh, and just be open, you know, be totally open. Sun is coming into Capricorn in the next couple of weeks, right? Where are we at? December 13th, leaves December 22nd, right? So we have um, a week and a half left in Sagittarius season. And now sun comes into Capricorn. And I think we're going to feel like we really are going to put to work, right? We're going to go to work as Capricorn does. We use the stuff that we've been learning all year. So it's an excellent, I love that Capricorn falls on, you know, New Year's because it's an excellent way to just get right out of the gate and just go for it. <laughs> and um, it provides the drive that some of us have been lacking, especially with the Mars and Pisces. And to have Mars and Aries at the beginning of the year too, all this cardinal energy is going to be so welcome. So it's going to be a, a great, a great start. So, okay enough of this. <laughs> I've been talking really fast, right? Mercury and Sagittarius. Blah, 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 blah. I just can't stop talking now. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, I will see you very, very soon. I'm getting the monthlies ready. Thank you so much. And I'll see you there. Bye.